Georgetown Hospital and Guyana is facing a nursing crisis. Nurses are leaving their jobs faster than some hospitals can fill them. The nurses who choose to go abroad are doing so in search of better wages and working conditions. Importing nurses has been the most popular short-term solution to this problem. The majority of imported nurses are coming from Cuba, and while they certainly serve to improve staffing numbers, in some cases, the language barrier is creating more problems than solutions. I'm the Unspecialist. Let's talk about imported nurses, the language barrier, and fatal mistakes. Before we get into today's topic, let's hear from today's sponsor, Washington Law Firm. One medical mistake can permanently change your life or the life of someone you love. These mistakes are too common in America, causing injury and sometimes death. If you suspect that you were injured as a result of a medical mistake, call Washington Law Firm today. Don't lose your opportunity to get compensated. Don't wait. Book your free consultation with Washington Law Firm by calling 718-877-3100. Or find us at 455 Utica Avenue, Brooklyn, New York. If you'd like to advertise with us, be sure to make contact via our Facebook page. If you'd like to hire me specifically to host your events for voiceovers, radio ads, or record other kinds of advertisement, you can also make contact using the same means. The beautiful voice that's in the ad on this video is available to you along with many others. Feel free to make contact and inquire about other services as well. As discussed in a previous video, Gan is facing a nursing shortage as a symptom of brain drain and a high immigration rate of skilled and qualified nurses. Importing nurses from Cuba and other parts of the world has been the most common short-term solution to this issue. Many nurses have already been imported and the government plans to import many more in 2024. Said in order to meet industry standards for nursing services, some 600 nurses would need to get hired to have one on one and, in some cases, four nurses for one patient care to be executed. At this time, the hospital is relying on the Ministry of Health to look to Cuba for some short term support, as was proposed by President Dr. Irfan Ali. We have 33 um, Cuba nurses that are currently in the system. We are searching around to recruit. Um, nurses and bring them into the system. So the program that we have with Cuba, uh, in the past we weren't really bringing a lot of nurses, we were bringing more doctors. Um, but now we have asked the Cuban government for nurses and we know sometimes that there's a difficulty with language. So we have a language program that we've put in place where um, persons who are Spanish speakers. You have a three-month crash course in how to uh, speak English. Furthermore, to start filling the immediate void, some 80 Cuban nurses were recruited this year, and according to the minister, another 200 nurses from Cuba are likely to be in Guyana in early 2024, with the ministry actively working to recruit more nurses from other countries. At the basic level, importing nurses comes as a welcome relief to local nurses who have already faced an increased workload due to the shortage. These imported nurses add numbers and of course capable hands to the staff. The ministry's three-month integration course also appears to be a good initiative aimed at limiting the potential risks that we may face when adding these foreign nurses to the staff complement. However, cracks are inevitable, and there are some issues that are becoming obvious, especially in relation to the importation of Cuban nurses. Now, let me make it clear, I am not disparaging Cuban nurses or saying that they are unqualified. I have had great experiences with the nurses that I've encountered, and I'm sure many others have had similar experiences too. However, my positive experiences and even the positive experiences of others do not negate the problems and issues that have happened and continue to happen. The first issue is the language barrier with patients and staff. It's simple. English is not the first language of these Cuban nurses. So there may be some difficulty even with the training course and time in service communicating with staff and patients and that may lead to some misunderstandings which could result in critical errors. It's also important to note that Guyanese English is different 
and many Guyanese across the country speak various Creole dialects. And of course, these Guyanese speaking Creolese will present some difficulties for the native Spanish speaking nurses. Several stories have already surfaced of nurses administering incorrect medication or making other mistakes as a result of these communication problems. And while difficulty communicating is to be expected in these circumstances, unlike at a bank, communication problems in a hospital can cost lives. The second issue is quite ironic. In some cases, adding the Cuban nurses actually means adding to the workload of the local staff. If things go right, it's indisputable. These nurses are an asset to the team. However, if things go wrong, this creates many, many problems. For example, the foreign nurse can have their role limited in order to mitigate risk. This means more work for the local staff who has to cover for them. For many local nurses, that covering looks a lot more like babysitting, which takes time and attention away from the increased patient load caused by the shortage. Hence, wherever these problems exist, the question lingers. Are these imported nurses an asset? or a liability? Now, of course, there's no one simple answer to that question. It depends on who you ask and the circumstances at any given institution. What we do know is that we can't even think about improving things until we acknowledge these issues. Sweeping them under the rug only makes things bad in the present and sets a precedent for an even worse future. I think it's also important to point out that this isn't a simple issue. This isn't something that you can snap your fingers and suddenly change or fix or remedy overnight. In fact, to get to the point where we are now, where nurses are leaving at such a high rate, took many years, well over a decade. And arguably, you can actually take the timeline back even further. Being optimistic, you'd think that some strategic and targeted action can serve to reduce or help solve the, those problems in a shorter time frame than it took for these problems to fester. But who knows? When you look out at the landscape today, what do you think? Do you think things are going to be solved anytime soon? Do you have any horror stories with imported nurses? Do you have any amazing stories with imported nurses? You can let me know down in the comments below. Also, let me know if I missed any significant issues or problems that may arise as a result of importing these foreign nurses. Be sure to like the video and share it with someone who you think needs to hear this. As always, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.